Today we're following up in our wonderful day of the Lord broadcast with what we talked about yesterday. Christ is going to come uh, eventually to set up his kingdom on earth. But he, first he comes again and he comes in great power and he comes with authority and he, he conquers all who oppose him and all who oppose his people. Uh, then he sets up that kingdom. But first he must dis dispose of those who would challenge him and challenge his authority. When the Lord sets up his kingdom, there's going to be no rivals. There's going to be no one who challenges him, uh, no one who is going to oppose him. He is going to be total monarch. There is one caveat to that that we'll look at later, but we're going to look right now at Zechariah chapter 14. In this uh, minor prophet, as we call it, because it's a it's a smaller uh, prophetic book in the Bible, uh, it, Zechariah has a lot to say about the return of Christ. But in chapter 14, where we'll look at for just a few moments, he says this, Behold, a day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you will be divided among you, and I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. Now, this is the battle of Armageddon in which Christ returns. And the city will be crap captured and the houses plundered and the women ravished and half of the city exiled, but the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. So it's going to be a devastating time. Uh, in Jerusalem for those who are the Jewish people. And the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. So there would be no hope for Israel and or for any other, other people of God who are in Jerusalem except the Lord himself goes forth in battle. In that day, and this is very important, in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in the middle from east to west, by a very large valley, so that half the mountain will move towards the north and the other half will move towards the south. And you will flee by the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Azal. Yes, you will flee just as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. And so we find Israel in, in fleeing from the armies of the world that have come to destroy them. And we find that the Lord himself comes to rescue them. And he comes and he stands on the Mount of Olives and it splits in two. Now, the thing here that is important is, is we looked at the rapture some days ago. We saw that the Lord in 1 Thessalonians 4 does not come to the earth at that time. He comes to our atmosphere in the clouds, it says. And he calls his people, the church, to be with him, to come up to be with him. Their bodies are changed and they, the dead in Christ will rise from the grave and be changed. The living saints will be changed and will go up to meet him in the clouds. And then we go back to be with him uh, forevermore. But here, this it's a very different picture. This time, the Lord actually comes to the earth and he stands on the Mount of Olives right outside of Jerusalem. And uh, on that Mount of Olives, it splits. And then he comes and he defeats all those who are trying to destroy Israel. And he uh, defeats all those who are opposed to him. And so we find that at the second coming of Christ at that point. Now we go back to Revelation chapter 20. And we find in Revelation chapter 20, there's yet one more attempt to overthrow the Lord. And that's Satan himself in verse 7. It says of chapter 20, When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for war. And the number of them is like the sand of the seashore. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth, surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city, and fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so we have one final foyer by Satan, one final attempt to destroy Jerusalem and to oppose God. Uh, that is put down immediately by the Lord himself, and Satan is now cast into the lake of fire where the Antichrist and the false prophet are already uh, residing. So that's our, the final attempt in all of history to oppose the Lord right at the end of the kingdom age, and then it's done. And no, there's no longer any opposition to the Lord. But there is one more event, one more event before the kingdom itself is set up, and we'll look at that tomorrow.